Hi, I'm Dr. Russell T. Warren, Associate Professor of Psychology at Utah Valley University. I'm also the author of the new book, In the Know, Debunking 35 Myths About Human Intelligence. There are many incorrect ideas people have about intelligence. One is the claim that intelligence tests were used in the early 20th century as part of xenophobic efforts to restrict immigration from Eastern and Southern Europe. For example, Stephen Jay Gould in his anti-testing propaganda book, The Mismeasure of Man, claimed that there is a direct causal connection between the intelligence testing movement and immigration restrictions in the U.S. that were implemented in the 1920s. Others have claimed that the American government used culturally inappropriate tests to screen immigrants and make it harder for some immigrants to arrive in the United States. This is seen in this clip from the 2010 documentary, IQ, A History of Deceit. Their journey had drained them. They had crossed the continent through Central Europe and they landed at Ellis Island, where Godard's tests were waiting for them. Their education level was usually low. Most had never been schooled and didn't speak a word of English. They were exhausted and scared. In this Jewish school in Massachusetts, teachers decided to revive the Ellis Island IQ test in class and in period costume. So you guys should line up because you have to wait for your turn to take your IQ test. The game is educational. The teachers want to submit their students to the same ordeal faced by immigrants in 1912 when they took the IQ test. So the inspectors, we will call you by your name one at a time. Please come forward. You are going to be taking the test with me. Please have a seat. I am going to be taking Gustav Friedlin. Gustav, you're supposed to write what's missing. You can draw it in, okay? I can't answer any questions. Your job is just to draw it in. Miriam, now hold the pencil like this. Okay, now look at the picture. Something's missing, missing. Fill in the missing piece. You're only going to have two minutes. A very American test, mixing universal questions like putting a mouth on a face with other questions the immigrants found completely baffling. Okay. How can someone who's grown up without electricity know about light bulbs or know about the net on a tennis court or U.S. bowling? As I explain in my book, In the Know, Debunking 35 Myths About Human Intelligence, the reality about intelligence tests and American immigration in the early 20th century is much more prosaic than these people would have you believe. The test shown in the documentary is called the Army Beta and was never used to screen immigrants. It is true that immigration officials screen for low intelligence, but the screening process did not include giving an intelligence test to every immigrant. I discussed the full screening process at Ellis Island in In the Know, but the short version is that immigrants were asked basic questions in their native language about themselves and their background, such as, what is your work, and where are you going? Immigrants might also be asked to count to 20 in their native language, or do simple arithmetic questions like adding 4 and 4. About 91% of immigrants passed these questions and did not receive any further mental examinations. The others received follow-up tests. For an immigrant to be denied entry into the United States, they had to fail the initial screening and the follow-up procedure the same day, plus at least three tests given on other days. Because an immigrant only had to pass a single test to be admitted to the country, very few were turned away for low intelligence. This chart shows that from 1908 to 1924, the percentage of immigrants rejected for low intelligence was never more than 0.103% of all arrivals. As I state in my book, if intelligence tests really were designed to discriminate against some groups of immigrants, they were remarkably ineffective. Moreover, the tests administered to new arrivals were designed with the immigrant population in mind. One example is this test, which required an examinee to put together this puzzle after watching the test administrator assemble it two or three times. Another example is the Knox cube test, where cubes were aligned in a row, and the test proctor would tap a sequence of cubes and then ask the examinee to reproduce the same sequence of taps. None of the immigration tests required reading, writing, high levels of education, or an understanding of American culture. 
Finally, intelligence test data had almost no influence on the passage of a 1924 law that greatly restricted immigration from countries outside of Northern and Western Europe. The text of the law makes no mention of intelligence test data, and intelligence test scores of immigrants were mentioned just once in the floor debate in the House of Representatives and never in the Senate. Committee testimony and discussion of about immigration rarely mentioned intelligence tests, and when the topic did come up, the data were not accepted uncritically. This is just one of many topics I cover in my book, In the Know, Debunking 35 Myths About Human Intelligence. The book is a non-technical discussion of issues surrounding intelligence testing. In the Know is published by Cambridge University Press and is available to order now at the links in the video description.